Hey everybody, this is Walter with Access to Power, and today I want to talk to you about sequencing motors. Uh, up till now, I've, been, I've talked to, I've taught you about uh, three wire start stop, how that works, and here on the table I have all three of these starters wired up in a traditional three wire start stop, and I'm going to show you how to change that in order to sequence the motors. Uh, individually so motor one would have to be on before number two can be on number two would have to be on before number three can be on and if you shut off number one you'll shut off all the motors so how to sequence motors that's what we're going to cover today on this episode of access to power Okay, we're back and I just wanted to talk to you about these starters real quick. Uh, these are a little bit different than the starters I've been uh, been wiring lately on this channel. Uh, this is the typical uh, contactor and motor overload that you guys have been used to seeing me wire. Today I'm going to wire uh, a motor protector, which is the overload protection as well as the overcurrent protection to the contactor and then I have I have some auxiliary contact blocks right here on top of the contactor. So I'm going to wire up this motor protector which is the same as our overload. Really, it takes the place of our overload plus it has overcurrent protection. And if you'll see here already I've done some preliminary wiring and the wiring I've done is I've taken the neutral up to each of the overloads in parallel and then I've wired the uh, through the normally close contact of the overload over to one side of the coil on my starter and I've done that to all three starters and On this particular I have a fourth starter here, and I just wanted to show you how to put this together uh, These are all from automation direct. This is auto automation directs style starter. These are Fuji starters and uh, I'm going to show you how to put these together and so here's your motor protector and your motor contactor. Actually, the motor contactor, when you get them from Fuji, the coil is on the same side as the line side. And to put them with the motor protector, we're gonna have to flip that over. So we take the cover, we just need to pop the cover off and flip it around so that the load side is on the coil side. And then we will put these together. So we're gonna take we're gonna take this module here, which all it does is pass the line one, two, and three on, and it makes for some nice tight wiring. And we're gonna wire that together, tighten all three up. And then we're going to mount, let me loosen these up, the line side here. And we're gonna mount the contactor onto the motor protector. And if you'll notice, this motor protector right here, it does not have a set of contacts, normally closed contacts. And on this particular starter, the alarm contacts come separately. These are a pair of normally closed. Uh, the BZ0K1B is the normally closed alarm contact. What the alarm contact does for us on a motor protector, it does not turn off when you turn, when you turn off the motor, motor protector, it stays closed. Uh, this alarm circuit say, stays closed. It stays closed whether this is on or whether this is off. The only time it opens is if the is if the motor protector trips. So let's turn that on and let's manually trip. In the trip condition, this would open. So if the overload pulls too many amps and trips, this this uh, this uh, alarm contact will also trip and turn off the neutral to our coil, and that will keep our motor from burning up. So to put this in, we just pop off this cover. This is just a cover there. And then we turn this over and we snap it in. And it has, on this particular starter, this normally closed has to be in the right, uh, in the right uh, hand slot, not the left slot, the right slot. And we pop it in and we're done. So let me pop this in next to all our other starters. There we go. And I'm going to slide it over. All right. So here, I don't have any motors hooked up. I wanted to keep just the controls wired up for simplicity. So here, you'll notice I have our neutrals are wired up. I also have neutrals going to 
each one of these light, each one of these start stop buttons and start buttons is an illuminated button. So I have a neutral going to each side of the button. Let me flip this over and maybe you can see from above and it's a little messy, but I have the neutral coming over going to each side of the light and on, on the buttons, but nothing's feeding the other, the other side of the light. So the lights aren't going to work. Um, I'll save that for another lesson uh, on using the starter or using a normally closed contact or something some other, something else to actually control the lights on the buttons. Um, but that'll be for a separate lesson. Um, but I do have these starters. If you look here, I have power coming in. It's feeding my emergency stop. And then my emergency stop feeds my stop buttons. It feeds all the stop buttons. Uh, I didn't wire up the last two because they're going to go to this fourth starter. I've only got three of these sets wired up. And then the stop button, this stop button feeds this start button. This is my holding contact and this is my start signal. And I, all three are the same and these are ready to go. So if I flip this over and I turn power on, I can turn on starter number one, starter number two, starter number three. I can turn off starter number one, two and three continue to run. I can turn off two, I can turn off three, I can turn off three before before two. I can turn them on in any order that I want. If I hit the E stop, they all turn off. Let me reset that E stop so I can start the process again. Let me turn off the control power. So here, I have them set up to start off any, any which way I want, in any, in any order I want. But now I want to change that and I want them to start in sequence. First number one, then number two, then number three, not three, not two, they have to be in order. So there are, there are multiple ways to do this. And today I want to focus on one of those ways. I may make another, maybe two more parts to this series and show you some different methods for sequencing motor starters on. But today I'm going to use probably the most traditional way, and that is to use the um, nor oh, I forgot to put this on. This is our normally uh, open and normally closed auxiliary contacts. So here on the contactor, when it when this contactor closes, line one is made with T1, line two with T2, line three or line three with T3. And so I'm going to need some normally open and normally closed contacts. So I have this adapter. I pop it in, and now when the starter closes. Not only does line one, two, and three close with T1, two, and three, but I also have two normally opens and two normally closed so that I can utilize for whatever I need. So what I'm gonna do with the power off is I'm going to change the wiring here just a little bit. So I need number two to come on only after number one is on. So I'm going to take the, the start signal from motor starter number two, I'll pull it off and I am going to, that's going to be a little messy because I'm, I, I don't have all this extra cable here. I'm going to run it to the normally, and if you were going to do this in the field, hopefully you'd make this look a lot better than this, but I'm going to run it to one of the normally closed on motor starter number one. Okay, and then I'm going to take another wire. Let's get some extra wire here. And I'm going to run from the the bottom side of that normally that normally open. Let's open this up on motor starter number one. And I'm going to make a loop. And that will start motor starter number two. And we're going to land our holding contact back on. So what we've done here is when we press the start on, on the second, on motor starter number two, start's going to come to this normally open. Now this will be open if starter number one is off. So the signal will not get coil and motor starter number two will not turn on unless motor starter number one is already on. So we're going to do the same thing with motor starter number three. I'm going to pull this off the coil. And I'm going to take motor starter number three, and I'm going to wire it to the to the normally whoop, almost 
got the wrong contact there. I'm going to wire it to the normally open on motor starter number two. And then from the bottom side, the other side of that normally open, let's get a little bit more blue wire here. I'm going to wire it through. And I'm going to feed motor starter number three. Let's just cut a little bit off. And we'll land that along with our holding contact for motor starter number three. And so now motor starter number three will not get a start signal unless motor starter number two is already on. So now with the motor starter like this, I can start them individually. I can start them in sequence, but I still have a problem because I will not be able to stop them in sequence. Let me explain. Let me turn the power on, make sure the e-stop is out. And I can, I cannot start number two, I cannot start number three, but I can start number one. Now I cannot start number three, but I can start number two. I can, now I can start number three. But I have a problem because if I turn off number one, number two and number three are gonna continue to run and, the, and they are running. And the reason is because I didn't break the holding contact from my starter. So th they're keeping themselves on. We don't want that. We want, when number one turns off, we want everything that's feeding it to also turn off. So we are going to hit e-stop. Let's turn off our power. The one thing we need to do is just like I moved the, the start switch, the start circuit from motor number one or from motor number two over, to num over through the contact of motor number one. Let me tighten that back up again. I am going to have to also break the holding contact through motor number one. So we're just going to make a loop here and we're going to break both go and just do that and we're going to do the same thing here so that my holding contact is also broken so let's give that a try now and see if we can start and stop them in sequence let me turn the power on let me flip turn on the emergency stop and now I can turn on, I cannot turn on number two, I cannot turn on number three, but I can turn on number one. I cannot turn on number three, but I can turn on number two, and now I can turn on number three. And if I press stop, all three should turn off. All three turn off. Now again, I cannot start them unless they're, they're in sequence. If I turn off number two, number one continues to run, but number two and number three stay on. If I turn off number one, they all come off. And there you go. That is one method of having a sequence start stop in motor controls. Uh, next time we'll cover a different method, a different method of sequencing these on and off. And uh, until then, have a great day.